A good customer contacted us because they were having a little bit of an issue with one of the customizable top plates they had made for our SmartVac2 vacuum work holding system. Let's take a closer look and see if we can help them diagnose the problem. The first thing I like to do with any vacuum fixture is check the quality of the gasketing. This is done really well. There's a splice here, but the both ends are butted up squarely on both the outer and inner profiles. I've looked at them all, it's not a problem. So let's move on. So the next thing I'd like to do is simplify the issue. So what I did, instead of dealing with all 16 part locations, we just plugged the through holes uh, with some vinyl stickers that are, are uh, airtight and left two of them open. And we're gonna work with these two to see if there's any issues. Now, right off the bat, just taking a look at this, that's a good surface area for what our customer wants to do, which is engraving some laser cut parts. That's fine, that's perfect. Uh, let me grab some parts, put them in place, and we'll start diagnosing. So here they are. I'll put them face down. They have a plastic backing on them. Okay. And let's turn on the vacuum and see what happens. Now we're watching this red button. We want to make sure that goes flush. It's not, so let's do the next step. Let's just put some pressure on this to try and get the parts to contact the gasket, see if that changes it. Okay, good. So two parts applying a little bit of pressure allowed the gasket material to make contact with the part. Now, why did we have to do that? Let's take a look at our part really quick. And as I do, I notice these parts are bowed. When I put them on a surface plate, they're warped about 50 to 100 thousandths. If these parts could talk, they would tell the fixture, it's not you, it's me. So that is what's causing the issue. Um, parts that are really flat, they would make contact with the gasket on all uh, locations at the same time. So you wouldn't have an issue of there being a slight leak. So essentially what's happening because these are, these are uh, dished is one end is sitting up and there's air rushing in past the gasket. So when we push down, that compresses the gasket enough so it touches. And as, if you notice when I let go, the vacuum was still being drawn. Let's try that one more time. Let go, and it's still being drawn, and now we're at maximum vacuum, because that's flush. Let's try it with uh, four more, uh, two more parts, a total of four. So let me actually go, let me go grab those. First, I'm gonna peel these up, and we'll keep going. We got a couple more parts. Put those in place, make sure they're clean. And located correctly, let's give it a shot. Great, so now we got four working. Let's try six just with hand pressure, see if we can do that. Let me peel these and get two more. All right. Okay, that is tricky. I cannot do that. So let me get a flat piece of material that I can put on, we call them press plates, so that we can apply equal pressure on these six parts and see how we're doing. The piece of material that I grabbed was just uh, one of our smaller top plates that's blank. Let's give this a shot. Yeah, that was actually pretty easy. Um, let's keep going.
Hey. All right. So with a little bit of technique, we were able to get now eight parts. Let's keep going. I'm gonna grab a larger press plate and see if we can incre incrementally add a couple more. So you know what, let's just try these two here. There's two more parts in place. And now I have a press plate, which is our 18 by 24 matching top plate. Let's put that on and see if we can get this one to work. Okay. Okay, that one, I got it to work, but it was definitely a bit more of a struggle. I don't like people struggling. So in a perfect world, it would be put these on, turn it on, and it would just work. But obviously, like, you know, when you're working with the vise, you usually put the parts in place and tap it down with the mallet, make sure they're seated. This is very similar. There's just a little bit of seating the parts. I'm gonna try two more and we'll keep going. way too much struggle to get that to work. When I was at 10, I was struggling. 12 is just too ambitious. I'm gonna go with eight because it was relatively easy to do with a smaller press plate and less struggle. Okay, so let's say you're in this position. You've created a top plate and you have way too many part positions. Is the top plate a waste? No. Why? Because when we advise people on how to uh, create the top plate. We specify a number 23 drill through hole. Why? Because that's the drill for a 1024 tap. Now the base unit comes with eight vacuum port sealing screws. They're 1024 button heads with a rubber o-ring. So you can just simply tap the ones and put those screws in and then it's sealed as if it's not even there then you can work with the ones you have. So it looks like we came up with a decent solution. Lesson here, don't be too ambitious in trying to hold as many parts as possible. It's just hard to manage that many parts. And remember, if one part is leaking, essentially they're all leaking and won't be held. Keep that in mind and thanks for watching.